Good morning. This is Patrick McNelly coming to you live from the Senior High Academy. And I would like to talk to you today about the formation of igneous rocks. In the formation of igneous rocks, they are formed by crystallization from a magma or a lava. And as we pan back, we can see that this, although it looks like the face of something, it is just a volcanic bomb or an ejecta that is so filled with air bubbles that this is a, considered a pumice and even though it's a boulder it will actually float in water. Igneous rocks that are formed at or near the surface of the earth are considered extrusive. Their fine grained or glassy texture gives them what we call an affinitic texture. Panning across we can see that they change compositions from a light colored composition on your left of light materials that are oftentimes associated with quartz and feldspars to a darker consistency which are considered uh, high in pyroxenes and olivine. We can see the volcanic glass on the left, which is dark or light green, to the medium brown colored obsidian to the traditional black obsidian. And if we pan slightly to one side, we can see the conchoidal fracturing, which is typical of cooling so fast that there are no crystalline structure inside to add to cleavage. So this is a typical conchoidal fracture. Panning back, I have another interesting piece to show you. It is called a volcanic bomb, but this particular volcanic bomb has air bubbles in it um, of a very heavy nature still, but this volcanic bomb was found by Hebekin Lake, Montana, and it is in close proximity to the Yellowstone supervolcano eruption of the Huckleberry Ridge uh, eruption that occurred some 3600 years ago. We know that it is a volcanic ejecta because of its angular nature and yet it's still rounded but with no evidence of stream rounding we know that it actually cooled in its flight as it was exploded out of the top of the Huckleberry Ridge or similar eruption. Panning back to the rocks, let's take a closer look. The extrusive igneous rocks are on the top. If they have more time to solidify and to grow large crystals, they form down deep in the earth and they are considered intrusive igneous rocks. The texture is coarse grained, individual rocks that can be seen with your naked eye, and so therefore they are considered phaneritic texture. Looking at the higher silica, lower dark material rocks, we can see that they do have a salt and pepper type of structure. Individual crystals crystallized to uh, within contact of each other and this is typical of a granite. I should say at this point that anytime you see a red color in the rocks that is considered a light color along with the whites and the light grays and buff color. So this is considered a granite because it has less than 25 percent dark colors in it. If we pan to the right we can see that now we're approaching a coarse grained phaneritic textured rock that has upwards of 25 to 45 percent dark materials. This is considered a diorite. And the diorite is still intrusive because it was formed deep under the surface of the earth. Panning further right we see a rock that has some 60 to 85 percent dark materials, pyroxenes, olivines, and the like, 
and this coarse grained rock is called a gabbro. Having the same composition as the gabbro would be those that had to cool faster because they were in close proximity to the surface of the ground and it is called basalt. If it has more medium colors, less dark material, it's considered an andesite and if it has even less dark materials, it is considered a rhyolite. If we have two separate environments of crystallization where we have a rhyolite but it has individual crystals that formed first and then the rock was the rock was pushed up where the matrix formed then we have a rhyolite porphyry having medium texture but still individual crystals crystals form first then the environment changed pushed up then it is a an andesite porphyry and finally over here we have huge crystals within a dark matrix that's very fine grain this would be a basalt porphyry forming right at the surface we have the volcanic glass once again with varying composition. If we look right up here we can see gas filled light colored pumice. Next to it still fairly high silica content is a lava that is sticky and it forms rough angular pieces. The Hawaiians call this an a'a lava which is very difficult or hard to walk on. We have a scoria in the middle, lots of bubbles but becoming smoother as it has less uh, silica content. And then on the right we have a smooth volcanic uh, lava that is considered ropey and smooth. It is pahoehoe lava by the Hawaiians. This is how they form with varying compositions and with varying times for the texture, texture and composition make up the igneous rocks. Hope this has been helpful. This is Patrick McNelly at the Senior Bronx Senior High Academy in Billings, Montana. Hope you have a good day.